Typhoon Tino is approaching the Philippines right now. Before the year ends, two or three more will follow. By the time 2025 concludes, the Philippines will have been struck by approximately 20 tropical cyclones, 20 typhoons in one year. Japan averages 10. Vietnam gets 9. Taiwan gets 6. Indonesia gets almost none. Why does the Philippines take 20 typhoons every year when neighboring countries get half that or less? The answer is geography. And it's not going to change. Before we talk about why the Philippines specifically, we need to understand how typhoons form. A typhoon requires five specific conditions. First, warm ocean water, at least 26.5 degrees Celsius, extending 50 meters deep. Second, atmospheric instability, warm, moist air that can rise rapidly. Third, low wind shear, calm conditions that don't tear the storm apart. Fourth, sufficient distance from the equator for Coriolis effect to create rotation. Fifth, a pre-existing weather disturbance. When all five align, you get a typhoon. And there's one region where these conditions exist nearly year-round, the Western Pacific, specifically the Pacific Warm Pool. The Pacific Warm Pool is the warmest body of water on Earth, stretching from the Philippines eastward to the international dateline. Sea surface temperatures average 28 to 30 degrees Celsius year-round. Compare that to the Atlantic, where hurricane-forming temperatures only exist June through November. The Pacific Warm Pool maintains typhoon conditions all year. This is why the Western Pacific produces more tropical cyclones than any other basin. Globally, about 90 tropical cyclones form annually. The Western Pacific accounts for roughly one-third, 30 typhoons per year. So if 30 typhoons form in the Western Pacific, why does the Philippines get 20 while others get fewer? because of where we sit. Typhoons forming in the Pacific Warm Pool, east of the Philippines near Micronesia, Palau, move westward, driven by trade winds. Trade winds are persistent easterly winds that blow from east to west across the tropics. A typhoon forming at 10 degrees north and 140 degrees east will track west-northwest. And what's directly in that path? The Philippines. We are the first major landmass in the path of typhoons forming in the Pacific Warm Pool. We are the doorstop of the Pacific. Let's compare to other countries. Japan sits farther north, between 30 and 45 degrees latitude. Typhoons reaching Japan have typically weakened after crossing the Philippines or curved into cooler waters. Japan gets about 10 typhoon approaches, many already weakening. Vietnam sits west of us. By the time a typhoon reaches Vietnam, it has often made landfall in the Philippines first, losing strength over land. Vietnam gets nine typhoons, but weaker ones. Taiwan is small and sits where many typhoons curve northward toward Japan rather than continuing west. Taiwan gets about six direct hits. Indonesia sits south of the typhoon belt, below 10 degrees south latitude. At these latitudes, Coriolis effect is too weak to support typhoon formation. The Philippines sits between 5 and 20 degrees north, directly in the typhoon highway. Our 7,600 islands stretch across 300,000 square kilometers. We present a massive target. But it's not just that we're in the path. Typhoons strengthen as they approach us. The Pacific Warm Pool extends right up to Philippine waters. As a typhoon moves westward, it continuously draws energy from 28 to 30 degree water. By the time it reaches us, it has spent three to five days over this fuel tank, intensifying. This is why the Philippines doesn't just get 20 typhoons. We get some of the strongest on Earth. Super Typhoon Haiyan, Yolanda, reached 315 kilometers per hour before striking in 2013. Super Typhoon Goni hit in 2020 with 225 kilometer per hour winds. Super Typhoon Rai struck in 2021 with 195 km per hour winds. Compare this to the Atlantic, which produces about 12 named storms per year, of which maybe two become major hurricanes, spread across the entire Caribbean, Gulf, and U.S. East Coast. The Philippines alone takes 20 tropical cyclones annually, with five to six reaching Super Typhoon status. Now let's talk seasonal patterns. The Philippines has two typhoon seasons. The primary season runs June through November, when the intertropical convergence zone shifts northward, providing conditions for formation. 
August, September, and October are peak months. Three typhoons can be tracked simultaneously. The secondary season runs December through February. Activity decreases, but typhoons still form, especially threatening southern Philippines. March through May, the dry season, has relatively low activity. But even then, typhoons can strike. There is no completely safe month. Is climate change making this worse? The number of typhoons isn't significantly increasing. The Western Pacific has always produced 25 to 35 typhoons annually, and that hasn't changed dramatically. But intensity is increasing. Warmer ocean temperatures are creating conditions for more rapid intensification and stronger peak winds. The proportion of Category 4 and 5 equivalent typhoons is increasing. We're not getting more typhoons, but the ones we get are becoming more powerful. Typhoon Haiyan's rapid intensification, tropical storm to Category 5 in 48 hours, is becoming more common. Forecasters have less warning time. Evacuation windows shrink. So here's the reality. The Philippines will face approximately 20 typhoons per year for the foreseeable future. This is determined by our latitude. We sit in tropics where Coriolis force supports formation. Our location, we're the first landmass west of the warm pool. Trade winds push storms directly toward us. Ocean temperatures remain above 26.5 degrees year-round. These factors aren't changing. The Pacific warm pool will continue existing. Trade winds will keep blowing east to west. The Philippines will remain at 5 to 20 degrees north latitude. We cannot escape typhoons. So what does this mean for 110 million Filipinos? It means typhoons are not anomalies. They're not rare, unexpected disasters. They're a recurring, predictable feature of Philippine geography. Every Filipino child should understand typhoon science. Every community should have practiced evacuation plans. Every home should withstand 150 km per hour winds. Typhoon preparedness shouldn't be a frantic scramble when Pegasa issues bulletins. It should be permanent readiness. Japan and Taiwan face similar exposure, but their death tolls are far lower. Why? Building codes, early warning systems, evacuation infrastructure, and preparedness culture. After the 1959 Isawan typhoon killed over 5,000, Japan overhauled its disaster systems. Today, even Category 5 equivalent typhoons cause single-digit deaths. The Philippines has the science. Pagasa is competent. Forecasting technology exists. The gap is in implementation, enforcement of building codes, evacuation infrastructure, public education, political will. Every year after a deadly typhoon, we hear the same promises. Better preparedness, stronger infrastructure, lessons learned. Then the next typhoon strikes with the same scenes. Families on rooftops, inadequate evacuation centers, delayed relief, coastal communities rebuilt in vulnerable locations. The Philippines cannot eliminate typhoons, but we can eliminate most typhoon deaths. Tino is approaching now. It will strike within days, then pass. Two months from now, another typhoon will form in the Pacific warm pool, track westward, and strike the Philippines. This is our reality. This is geography. The question isn't whether typhoons will keep coming. They will. The question is, will we finally build the systems and infrastructure that allow us to live with typhoons without losing thousands of lives each year? I make these videos because understanding why matters. When you understand the Philippines is locked into a geographic pattern, guaranteeing 20 typhoons annually, you stop treating each as a surprise. You prepare year-round. You demand better from government. You build homes that withstand winds. You know your evacuation routes. Knowledge doesn't stop typhoons. But it saves lives. Subscribe. I'll continue breaking down Philippine disaster science, not just to inform, but to empower Filipinos to survive our geographic reality. Beneath the depths, knowledge saves lives.